Want to know how to get the same cell coverage for up to half the cost? Well, instead of spending a fortune building and maintaining their own cell phone towers, Consumer Cellular just pays to use the same towers as the largest carriers and passes the savings on to you. Pretty smart, huh? Consumer Cellular. When freedom calls, we're here to answer. Call us at 1-888-FREEDOM. Half the cost savings based on cost of Consumer Cellular single-line 5 gigabyte data plan with unlimited talk and text compared to lowest cost single-line postpaid unlimited talk, text, and data plan offered by T-Mobile and Verizon in May 2023. Welcome to Scarlet's Fever, the home of Sospan Central and Westera is Bestera. Hello and welcome to a bonus edition of Scarlet's Fever with me, Lee G. I'm on my own today, apart from a rather special guest, Rachel Evans from Cree 16. Good, after- oh, good evening, Rachel. How are you? Good evening. Fine, thank you. How are you? Yeah, jolly good. It's that time of year when evening comes a lot earlier. <laughs> you can never tell if it's evening <laughs> or, or afternoon, isn't it? So, um, so I should say you, you're you're vice chair of Cree sixteen, and we we're, we're going to talk about all things Cree sixteen and Scarlets. But before we do that, let's have a little chat about yesterday's game. So, uh. uh a momentous, massive victory against Cardiff. I don't care what the Cardiff boy says, it was huge. So um, what, what did you think of the game yesterday? Well, it's great to do the double over Cardiff this season. Um, that's the starting point. It's great to get the win, let's be honest, after uh, a you know, relatively poor start to the season. It's only our second win uh, out of seven, so it's great to get that win. Yeah, I think the boys played well yesterday. Slow start um, in both halves, really. Um Obviously, they got going then, and particularly the the red card helped us. I think it was. I know there's a bit of a debate about whether it was red or not. For me, I think it was red. You know, it was a tip tackle. Um, reading this morning about Sheriff saying from Cardiff's perspective that, um, I think the touch. I'm sorry, the TMO had said that he'd hit uh, Davis had hit his uh, back before his head, and Sheriff felt that then should be a yellow card. So it'll be interesting to see whether. Um, you know, whether that is downgraded, but for me, it was a red. Um, mm. And obviously, a red card does change a game, so we've got to take that into account. Ha- saying that, I thought Scarlet's played well overall. I think the halfbacks were sublime. Um, you know, we've come to expect that from Gareth, haven't we, you know, over the years, but I think he's had a second wind uh, in the last 18 months or so. Um, you know, I, I, I'll be honest, I was one of those ones maybe 18 months, two years ago thinking, oh, is Gareth coming to the end of, of, of his time or at his best, I should say. But, yeah, he's really come back back to, to form. And I think Johan Lloyd played really well. Um, my expectations probably at the start of the season, would he would be a, a good utility back, but maybe taking his time to to get into that 10 position. And it, it is going to take time. You know, Dwayne Peel said that himself, but I think yesterday he he really came into his own and, you know, commentators even talking about, is it going to be Owen Lloyd and, and Gareth Davis as the halfback pit for Wales? So in the Six Nations, that'll be interesting. But yeah, with Costi injured, Owen's had to step up and, it's, and that was really good to see. Yeah, you, you you almost in that position of going. I kind of hope he does play well, but not well enough to get into the Wales side because six it's weeks or eight weeks. It's, is, yeah. <laughs> it's you're a bit like, can you just hold it back for a couple of weeks and just let somebody else and then just so we can have you just for this season and yeah. then next year, <laughs> you know, when, when when everybody's back from injury. But yeah, yeah, exactly. I yeah, mean, there's the things to work on. Obviously, I think the line out still is a bit of you know malfunction quite a few times, and so that, that's to work on. But yeah, it was positive to get a win going into Europe. You know, if if we can do the same as we did last year and, and start a good run in Europe, then hopefully, you know, mm-hmm. we'll have a, a better run through the season than we've had a start. Yeah, it's it's a shame we can't start the the season halfway through. Because like like we did last year, if we go on a run now and we have a, a you know five or six yeah. really decent games, like why can't we do this at the start? But yeah. <laughs> there, there, there we go. So let's let's have a little chat then about Cree sixteen. So for those of us that don't know much about Cree sixteen, what is the organisation? What 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 does it do? What what's it about? So I'm a relatively new um, board member, really. I've probably been on the board for about a year now. Um, 
but the Cree 16 was formed back in February 2007, so it, it's been around a while now, um, with the main purpose of representing the supporters. Um, it adopted the the rules and philosophies of supporters trust, which existed across the country in various forms, whether it's football or, or rugby, um, where it acknowledges that supporters are the lifeblood of any club um, and therefore they have a right to representation. So being a supporters trust is slightly different to being a supporters club because uh, you're classified as a community benefit society, which was all new to me when I joined. I, I've learned a lot in the last <laughs> year or so. Um, and that means that it's uh, or our accounts are audited by the Financial Conduct Authority um, and everything's done democratically. So um, we have annual elections uh, and those elections are for two year terms, but obviously everybody's term comes to an at different times which is why there are elections every year and basically anybody more or less anybody can uh, apply to to be a board member um, and we're also really fortunate that we have a seat on the Scarlet's board um, and maybe we'll talk about that a bit later but that's a um, really beneficial part of uh, of Cree 16 um, and then we hold we meet at least once a month um, but we're in constant dialogue through various communications um, and we're also in constant dialogue with the club um, and we also then uh, hold uh, meetings with coaches uh, and the management allowing our members then to have that direct contact with um, with the club and from my perspective the reason why I originally joined was well first of all I, I one of the emails that we got sent was that Crease were uh, keen to diversify their board um, which is something lots of boards have been doing recently um, and I was conscious of the fact that as it at, at the time there have been female members before that wasn't a female member on on the board so I thought I'd see what it was about and and and, and join the join the board. Cool so it, it's fair to say it's a, a like a, a a communication channel between supporters and the club and everything works both ways but it's all above board and it's all kind of structured and, and yes. open and it's quite formal you know, you know yeah yeah and there are some people that love the formality of it and there are some people that won't but we need something like that don't we to just kind of um make it a bit not trustworthy but do you know what i mean it gives it a certain level doesn't it yeah. a certain yeah. Yeah, credibility yeah. yeah and so the there was a meet the coaches session earlier this yeah. week wasn't there so how how did that go yeah that was well attended you know it, it's tough when you've got to meet the coaches um session when you're on a on a losing streak um so there were some tough questions for Dwayne and the team i mean i think they answered them really honestly um, and that's all you can ask of of the the coaches is that they answer the questions honestly. So yeah, there were some you know difficult questions, I suppose. But that's the nature of of coaching, and that's the nature of you know when you're losing matches, I guess. And I think that's the the really good bit about Crew Sixteen is it gives people the opportunity to put those questions to coaches r rather than just shouting about it down the pub or on social media or whatever. You you can actually say right, okay. You know, I'm going to ask this question to somebody that is important. Do you yeah, know what exactly. I mean? It's it's a massive benefit, and but that won't stop people on social media. No, <laughs> of course it, won't. no. it won't. No. So you, you you touched on this bit already, but what's the difference between yourselves then and like the the official supporters group? Is there anything you do differently, or? Yeah, I I think it would be unfair of me to say too much in the sense of I I I'm not aware of too much of what what the um, Scarlet Supporters group do I mean like, from their Twitter account you know that it's notes that they promote Scarlet's rugby obviously as we all do that's our, our love um offer travel advice and show, social activities and you know lots of uh whether it's football or rugby uh clubs have uh, a supporters trust and a supporters club so I guess this, they're both slightly different. It wouldn't be fair of me to go in to elaborate because I simply don't know. But I guess, as you say, from our perspective, the supporter, the the Cree sixteen, where, as you say, the more the the more formal bit, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. With that, the the elections and and the um, seat on the board as it sounds, yeah. 
Cool. Okay. So for me, one of the, the key bits of supporters groups uh, uh, within Wales is the, the, the JSG. So how does how does that work and how does um how does Cree 16 interact with that and, and what kind of work goes on with with you because again we see the name yeah and yeah. then we see stuff come out but we don't really know what you know how that works between the JSG and clubs and all that so yeah and that's a fair point and to be honest out of everything probably when I joined the board this is the thing that was newest to me in terms of you know what JSG do so they are the uh, a, they're a, a group that is formed from all the supporters groups across the um, the regions, the four professional teams. And I think I might say they were established in 2013. Um, and that was as a direct result of, you know, if we all remember back to that stage when there was a real threat to the future of, of our teams. Um, and, uh, you know, there was a lot of, unhappiness with the governance of the WRU not something that stopped <laughs> this is something that's, that's been in a running <laughs> theme I guess um so what the purpose of JSG then is is to try and ensure that there's a regular dialogue with the WRU and the PRB so the JS, JSG doesn't interact with the Scarlets as such so it's the two or three members of each of the supporters groups feed into the uh, to JSG um, and then they put forward the views of the various supporters groups um, and minutes then are, are sent to members. And I think there's, you know, particularly in, in recent months, um, there's been a lot to discuss, obviously, with uh, with the uh, report and changes to the WIU. Hmm. So being part of JSG, then, if, if you were a part of Cre 16, you, you you could also influence what happens at JSG level and, you know, around all of Welsh rugby, really. Isn't yeah, yeah, it? definitely. So if yeah. you've got, you know, if, if we think, if think of the members that we've got now, if if the, any particular board member is particularly interested in that element of of Welsh rugby, then, yeah, there's the opportunity to feed that in. But also, like you said, we you know we can use our uh, position in JSG to reflect the views of any of our members. Yeah, which is important, which is really important. So you touched on the, the WRU report there um, just now, and obviously being in a, a position of being a female within the game, how you know how does that report make you feel? Does it make you feel better, as in things are a bit more in the open now and, and a promise is being made to improve? Or how, how, does, it, how does that report make you feel now? Yeah, it was pretty stark reading, wasn't it, from start to finish, really, plus adding in Amanda Blanc's um, resignation statement and all of that. Yes, it makes me feel, well, it's depressing, but it gives me hope. That being said, said it's only going to have an impact if I think that there is a, you know, a, people are making, there's an independent sort of group overseeing what's, you know, that those changes are going to be happening. There's no point having points recommended unless they're implemented and they're impl implemented correctly so that's certainly hopefully something um that we'll see but you know hopefully it's going to bring about improved governance i mean i would argue it couldn't have got much worse <laughs> yeah i was gonna um, say yeah <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully that's something but and then in turn if if there is improved governance and to be fair everything seems to suggest so you know hopefully we're going in, in the direct uh, in the right direction but then hopefully that will lead to an improved culture across the organization and that, that's what's important you know I was horrified to read some of the comments in in the report about how women were referred to whether that's players or people working within the organization you know really well just yeah bad yeah and hopefully that you know that we, we've moved on from that and of course as part of that hopefully then with this that there will be improved conditions for female staff and players because it's just simply not good enough that that's how women have been treated within the organization yeah and it it's strange that you know so many of us kind of knew that this was the case before and yeah. nothing was really happening and it and it it was not not tacit acceptance but it was so difficult to change it it took it took the the, the report on the bbc and then all of the stuff kind of came out from there but it, it took a massive change and, and like you say thankfully things 
look like, you know, fingers crossed, look like they're changing quite rapidly and and not before time. So, yeah. So do, is there a confidence that the WIU, for, from a crease uh, uh, um, kind of perspective, is there a confidence that the WIU are going to to change it? Are the, They are, you know, putting things in place that maybe we haven't heard about just yet? I think at this stage, we've got to have faith in, in, in the process. Um, you know, as you know, I'm sure JSG in particular will be keeping a, a close eye on, on that. And obviously, you know, Abitini is going to have to drive a new strategy for the whole game in Wales. It's going to have to, you know, there have to be wholesale changes. But what I'd also say is that as obviously at the forefront is that change in culture and conditions for female staff. But also what we don't want to fall by the wayside is the growing of the commercial side of, of, of the game. And also the impact on the pro side, so it's it's having that balance as well, and making sure that all aspects of the game are developed um, as we move forward. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So coming back to Crease Sixteen and the Scarlets, then how does yeah how does the relationship between Sixteen and Scarlets, you know, how does that work, and how does that benefit everyone, and you know, we all kind of know it's a good thing. But then it's like, right, well, how is it a good thing? Do you know, do you know what I mean? How, yeah. how does it work? Well, to touch on some of the things that we've already said, obviously one of the benefits is, as we've said, that direct ability to meet the coaches or meet the players and, and for our members to have an opportunity to ask the questions, whether they're difficult or not, to 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 the club. Um, we also have uh, regular contact, probably weekly, really, via email or whatever it is, you know, with um, with the Scarlets in some form or another. Um, and, you know, we'd like to think, well, we do, we know we do, that if our members email us or contact us with any feedback or any concerns, then we always make sure that that's fed back to the club. Um, so rest assured that if you are a member or thinking of of being a member, that you know we do make sure we take it really seriously that we do represent our members. That's not to say that all our feedback is well well received. You know, it, it, it's the nature of of what we do that sometimes the feedback, you know, just, it depends is is more welcomed than than other times and probably depends on who we speak speak to you know we got I got to be honest Simon Mudarek as executive chair is, is always generous with his time with us and and will take on board um what we've said so yeah and you know it, it's and we're also fortunate as well that we've got a recently uh, elected member who um is passionate about um making sure that accessibility in the club is, is as it should be, and um, she's really fed back. That's we've now got two female members, which is good. Uh, so the other um, female member, uh, you know, is is very passionate about making sure accessibility is right, and as a wheelchair user, has has fed back lots of things that the club have found useful. Um, and as I said as well, um, having a, a member of Cree Sixteen on the um, Scarlet's board is is also an opportunity to um, feedback our, our thoughts on on that level as well. And it, it's important that you know, supporters are able to ask difficult questions, you know, and it, it's good from the club's point of view, from a Scarlet's point of view, that one, people feel confident enough to ask a difficult question. You know, they, they, they need to have that environment where they can they can say, look, I don't think this is right or what are we doing about this? So it's important that that, that is there in the club and that's, that's really good. But it's also important to have the channel to to ask that question and some of those questions need to be asked in private don't they you yes, know some yeah. Of them, yeah so you know from all of those kind of things it, it's it's a great relationship to have between pre-16 and scarlets where say the good stuff is there uh, and the stuff that kind of can trip people up that that's all there and it's all dealt with in the right way isn't it yeah, and you know, ultimately, you know, when when we do give feedback from our members, it's all coming from a good place. You know, we all want the same thing. We all want Scarlets to be the best club, to be, you know, close to the top of the table as they as we can be, and to have a, a great match day experience. So it's all coming from, you know, a good place, really. Yeah, and I'll be fair, the match day experience with the barn and you know with all the little bits and bobs outside it's improving every home game at the minute 
It's, uh, yeah, I think that's something that that we've we've all agreed on, and I'd, oh, I know I, there's no way to quantify it, but we'd like to hope that some of the feedback that we've um, provided with, to the club has fed into that. But certainly, I think, and and that's also credit to the the new newer stadium manager who's who's done you know a good job with the Scarlet. But yeah, I'd certainly agree towards that second half of last season. I think the match day experience really did begin to improve, and that's that's continued. Yeah, absolutely. So, what does the what does the future look like for Crew Sixteen and the Scarlets? Then is there anything on the horizon that you're allowed to tell us about that can kind of, you know, this is coming, this is going to be great, or is it all hush hush, or is it nothing on the on the horizon? What 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 does the future look like, or what would you hope it looks like? Well, first of all, in terms of our goals as as Crease Sixteen, one of our key um, goals for the, the next couple of years is certainly to grow our membership. Um, and hopefully, if anybody's listening, you know, uh, I know you'll share at the end uh, uh, how to become a member. So that's certainly one thing. We're also keen to, um, d- like I said, diversify our membership. Um, yes, we've got two female members on the board now, but we're still very white as a board, you know, and, you know, we're keen to diversify in all aspects um, of, of that. Um, hopefully we'll have more events o- over over the year as well. Um, and then, of course, hopefully as well, that the next event that we have, we'll have won a few matches in Europe and, and things will be, you know, looking on the up. Hmm. I, it's one of those things, isn't it, being a part of, sport is so much of it revolves around did we win our last game it's uh, you know the the just the stuff on social media this week is so different from last week because we've had a win against Cardiff and last week we lost against the Ospreys yeah. it, it, the attitude is just very very different and you know, we, we're in the same kind of place where we try to reflect you know the after the Ospreys game there were people that were, you know, let's bring back hanging. And then there were people that were like, you know, okay, let's give the guy a chance sort of thing around Dwayne Peel. So finding a balance in between them and trying to reflect that and say, okay, this is what supporters are feeling is is quite difficult. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, let's, if anyone does want to get involved in, in Crease 16, so... Am I right in thinking that the website is wwwcrease 16 that's one six dot Cymru, and then yeah. there's the membership inside there, yeah? Yeah. And what I'd also say was if um if anybody is a member, we are we still do have two seats available on the board. So if anybody is interested to to get in touch from that aspect as well. And this is the bit that I like about Cree 60. It it gives people the genuine opportunity to to get involved and, and influence what's going on i said the, the amount of keyboard warriors that we come across you would have come across them as well we, we come across them quite regularly people that are sitting there and are, are full of the ideas and full of the you should be doing this and you should be doing that and why aren't you doing this 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 is the opportunity isn't it to, to get yeah. involved in crease 16 and and have your voice heard yeah like definitely and, and as i said there are there are two seats available currently so you know if, if people feel strongly about something as i said we try to represent our members um to the best of our ability but there are two seats available to to come and join us as well fantastic so looking forward then next week's game um what what are your hopes and expectations for next week's game Oh, so difficult, isn't it? As you say, you know, we, we, if you'd been asking me this after the Ospreys match, it would have been no expectations. But then having, la- you know, yesterday's match was really positive. I mean, I think we're still going to have to start much quicker. As I said, you know, it was a slow start in um, in Cardiff. So we're going to have to come out of the blocks. You know, again, it depends on the weather as well. It depends as well, you know, with the, with the French teams, you never know what mm. what team turns up you know so we'll see but obviously being an away match we're up against it more and we've got a few away matches we've had a few away matches got a few to come as well so it, it's, it's it's tough but I think if we can again depending on the weather if we can spread the ball and if, if the halfbacks make such you know a, a good uh, combination as they did this week and we can spread the ball and run then as we know you know we are unstoppable in, in that case but it, it, you know we need our line out to function we need a strong 
pack to to be able to challenge them. Mm. And it's it's one. Of, I'm I'm almost on the point of not making predictions for for Scarlet's games at the minute because it either goes really really well or not. I know. I, I try to <laughs> go in with no expectations, so then then you're not heartbroken. At the end. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a case of let's enjoy the game for a couple of days, isn't it? Yeah. Cool. Well, Rachel, thank you for your time today. It's been uh, it's been really good. So we will share the the links to Crease Sixteen um, membership. And I keep promising Martin that I'm going to become a member. And uh, I, I I genuinely just haven't got round to it for about four seasons now. <laughs> so so I'm genuinely going to become. So I also. It's it's still free, isn't it, being a member? It's still free, yeah. So yeah. if you go on the website, uh, you can join up. There are different um, what, you know, things that you can join where you can donate £10 or £20 or whatever you want to to uh, donate. I mean, that, when we do get money, that, that goes towards our costs, um, whether it's, you know, things to, to do with the administration of, of, of Cree 16 or, you know, we've just um, sponsored uh, Teddy Leatherbrow. So... That, that you know goes towards things like that as well so yeah you, you can donate money but it is free to join it is free fine so there's absolutely no reason not to for anyone that's listening and if you care about the scarlets and i include myself in this i will put my hand on my heart i will join up this evening and i will be there i, will, I, I promise Brilliant. martin that i'm going to try and make it to the next coaches um i'd say it probably takes two minutes to join so not much time at all so in the advert break or in between Strictly and whatever comes after Strictly yeah. on a Sunday night, you could join up in that point. Fantastic. Right. Rachel, thank you so much for your time today. It's been absolutely superb. And uh, yeah, hopefully I will be up at the park at some point this season. And no doubt Martin will be trailing around with me going, this is Lee and we'll have a catch up and it'd be nice to meet you and say hello. So I look That'd forward be great. to that. <laughs> absolutely. Right. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, for everyone else that's listening, don't forget our main pod. Our main pod will be out on Tuesday morning. So please listen to there because this is going to be a good one because we've actually got a victory to talk about. And we all know what Hugh and Martin are like when they've got a victory under their belt. It's uh, We're going to have a bit of fun. So thank you for your time, Rachel. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And uh, we'll speak to you soon. Cheers. Thank you for listening to the Scarlet's Fever podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Please subscribe, rate and review wherever you listen to us as it really helps us spread the word. You can find us on all the usual social media channels or email us on welshregionalrugbypod at gmail.com. And remember, whatever the question, rugby is always the answer. Podcast Network. Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more.